Today in Engineering Newswire, we're driving 270 miles per hour at Kennedy in a car, engineering face melting metal, and saving lives in a flying donkey. Yeah, you really don't want to miss this one. The air mule is compact. Well, I mean, it's still the size of a Humvee, which is still small compared to a helicopter's total footprint. Well, the single engine vertical takeoff and landing aircraft is built with internal lift rotors that enable it to fly inside obstructed terrain. You know, areas where choppers simply can't maneuver. From his rail-based urban aeronautics, Air Mule isn't the prettiest airborne vehicle you'll ever lay eyes on, but things could be worse for it. I mean, it could be the air donkey or... Or the air ass. Air ass. <laughs> Let's call it the Aris and see what happens. Aris is unique in its ability to lift payloads up to 500 kilograms. It's part of a new generation of ducted fan aircraft known as Fancraft, and it's capable of pulling up to two people out of a sticky situation, like a first generation personal helicarrier. Right there, that. Yeah, that's a Fancraft. Play on words. <laughs> Whatever. This week at Embedded World in Germany, Greenhill Software announced that Urban specified its integrity, real-time operating system, and multi-integrated development environment for Air Mule's flight management system. Greenhill's products are often deployed in avionics systems. Well, Flying Donkey is ideally suited to special robotic operation, like telepresence, leaving combat pilots with the consequence without the thrill. Look at this! It wants to be these guys. When I grow up, I want to be a fighter pilot, sitting on a box in a nondescript warehouse. Oh, oh, you got it? No. You got it? You got it? No, no. You got it? No, no. Easy. Okay. Eat. Here, no. Forward. Uh, Forward. I'm trying. Forward. I'm trying. Forward. It's, oh, there. geez. Forward. Oh, geez. Forward. Uh, I think I got it. Ah! Oh, For, no, ah! There oh, it is. No, there oh, it is. Oh, there here it is. we go. Straight, straight it out. Straighten it out. <sighs> we got this. Okay. It's fine. We've all been to a metal show. Okay, maybe we haven't all been, but I certainly have. But a new one-man metal band known as Author and Punisher has broken down the standard of a typical performance. Rather than playing traditional instruments, engineer and musician Tristan Schoen uses his voice coupled with a pile of Arduino-powered machines to create his unique brand of heavy metal. <laughs> Though the vocals that Schoen is belching into his masks are heavily overlaid with effects, a major part of his sound relies on compressed air for mechanical manipulation of the sound. For example, one of the masks uses two solenoid control valves to open and close a piece of Lexan plastic at 80 PSI. The sound manipulation only gets crazier from there with servo motors to piezos. It gets a little weird when you combine engineering with metal music. By relying on mechanical manipulation of sound, Schoen puts his engineering expertise to the test as he continues to steer away from traditional MIDI control devices and toward a more raw, analog sound. I'll stick to traditional instruments, thank you. So while some of you are exchanging flowers, chocolates, and googly eyes with each other on Valentine's Day, the Venom GT set a new world speed record for two-seat sports cars by reaching a top speed of 270.49 miles per hour at Kennedy Space Center's Space Shuttle Landing Runway. Can we just pause for a moment to view the footage? I mean, come on. Who needs Cupid when you're riding a net? According to Race Logic, world renowned maker of GPS data acquisition systems, the record run was made over a distance of 2.4 miles, which allowed the Venom just 8 tenths of a mile to stop. 
Thankfully, its Brembo carbon ceramic brakes were able to haul the car down for 270 miles per hour well before the end of the runway's 1,000 foot threshold. Thank heavens, because we wouldn't want to damage that paint. Sweet looking ride. To date, only 11 Venom GTs have been built and delivered around the world. Only 29 will be made worldwide. The Venom GT is not only the fastest, but also one of the most exclusive hypercars ever produced. Well, I think it's about time for Cupid to reconsider his arrows. Do you have story ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in the next episode. For the PD&D channel, I'm Chris Fox, and this has been your Engineering Newswire.